Well, welcome back. This is just a very short video. Uh, I want to show you a technique uh, which you may or may not have seen before. Um, if you're of a certain age and you've done black and white printing, you may remember um, a, a chemical called liquid light. Um, this was uh, basically a, a bleach, and you could apply it to a black and white print with a paintbrush uh, very carefully, and it would just add a little bit of bleaching to the area you applied it to and made that image just sparkle. Particularly good if you uh, was maybe wanted to brighten somebody's eyes, um, or maybe if you toned a print and you wanted just to brighten certain areas if it had gone a little bit dull. So we're going to do um, a variation on that uh, digitally in Photoshop today. Okay, so now we're in Photoshop CS3. Um, it doesn't matter what version of Photoshop you use. The uh, what I'm going to show you is is uh, still uh, going to be usable in uh, whatever version. Even uh, Photoshop Elements, I think you uh, certainly on the earlier versions, you might not have curves, but you've got levels, and you can still do a, a similar effect using that. Okay, so we've got our image open, and um, this is an image I shot in 2007, never used it, so I've dragged it out of my archives, and it's a couple of fishermen who are net fishing very, very early one morning on a beach in the southwest of England, in Cornwall. So I'm going to drag this one out, I've done a little bit of clean up on it, but um, what I'm going to show you now is a couple of little variations of the same thing. We're going to first of all go down to uh, curves and add a curves adjustment layer, and don't need to be too worried about this but I'm just going to want to lighten the image a fair bit so I'm just going to drag the top of the curve across like so somewhere around there and then I'm going to get my paint bucket tool and with black as my foreground color I'm going to fill that layer with black and that obviously takes away the adjustment white reveals black conceals. It's now gone black so it's concealing the adjustment. I'm going to choose white as my foreground colour and with a, a paintbrush, um, a so very soft paintbrush, um, I'm going to just start to look at the image and go over certain areas and what we're looking to do here is just add a bit of sparkle and bring out a few highlights. Um, now I'm using a, a Wacom pressure sensitive pen and tablet for this so I'm going to be using that but I'm going to show you a variation to help if you haven't got a, a pressure sensitive tablet or pen then I'm going to show you another variation on this in a second which is actually very handy so I'm going to zoom in uh, I'm going to concentrate for this one uh, just on the net here and I'm just going to gradually uh, remember I'm just going to press down very lightly on this I'm just going to go over the net here Okay, now I can press the Alt or Option key on that mask and we can see what I've done. And you can see it looks like the dog's chewed at the moment. So I can perhaps go in and fill this area like so. And you notice every time I'm painting, because I'm using uh, different different uh, pressures, I'm getting different opacities. And that's okay, um, but I'm going to show you like sort of variation of that in a minute, which will help you get a bit more of even uh, results. Now if I wanted to, let's just have a quick look before after you can see that's already already coming into effect if I f wanted to I could draw a selection around this like so go to filter blur Gaussian blur and we could just apply a little bit of blurring to this and that would just smooth out my brush strokes if we're all worried uh, about it I'm going to click down on the option the alt key again to bring it back before after let me just zoom out so just just a, a, a simple way of uh, just brightening certain parts of the image, like so. Now another really useful technique I'm going to show you, especially if you haven't got a pressure sensitive tablet and pen, um, what will give you a little bit more control is the following. Let's just make another curves adjustment. I'm just going to do this very quickly, uh, just to show you the effect more than anything. I'm going to fill that with black to hide the adjustment. I'm going to get a brush tool again with white as my foreground colour like so and I'm just going to show you just this very quickly by just drawing a line so that is giving me uh, revealing the the adjustment that we've made and let me just do another one like so to show you the comparison if I make a line like this 
and immediately without touching any other tools go to edit fade brush tool I can actually control the effect the strength of the effect that we've just made like so because I can drop this down to 25% this fade uh, adjustment is only available straight after you've you made the adjustment so if you went and made the adjustment now and then I clicked on something else okay and then went to edit it's not going to be available so you have to make it as soon as you made the adjustment just do another one you have to go straight to edit fade brush tool and now this gives you quite a bit of control over the effect okay so if you haven't got if you don't want to be adjusting the opacity up here and you haven't got a pressure sensitive tablet and pen that is another little trick which is really useful you know if you're trying to make adjustments on the wave here you want it nice and bright there and then you want to go edit fade like so you could fade that bit and then next to it you may want to for some reason you may want to come in and maybe have this bit of the wave that bit brighter you can come in and go to edit fade brush and maybe just not not that down just a little bit more like so and if we alter option click on the mask you can see the different shades of gray that that's done so just a quick uh, little tip there that is a very very useful little tip um, for just making selective adjustments at different uh, different strengths on the mask So I've done a little bit more work on the image and I'm just going to show you how I finished this off. Uh, first of all, we've got a um, bit of a broad brightening of the C area, very subtle. I'll show you the mask for that. Nothing that exciting. Uh, then I've obviously gone in and uh, done a very subtle brightening of the foreground wave down here. You can probably see. Um, then I've gone and done fairly broad brightening, very subtly, of the foreground here. And finally, I've gone in in a more selective way and just finely painted in some of these lines on here. And then I've done that uh, trick where I've gone in with the uh, blur, I've got the filter blur, and then Gaussian blur and soften that so we've got no sort of harsh lines on there. Another thing I want to point out if we look at the net brightness one here, if you look at the boat. Um, if you find the uh, adjustment obviously isn't quite strong enough, you can go in and adjust the curve. Another option would be maybe to go to the blend mode and maybe put it onto something like um, ooh, lighten or screen. Now screen sometimes produces a too strong of an effect, but you can always knock the opacity down or up using the uh, opacity slider. So that's given me a little bit more of what I want like somewhere around there so there's always other always options with the with the uh, with the blending modes and the opacity to give you that bit more fine tuning the another thing when you make any kind of adjustment on an image whether it's a selective adjustment or a global adjustment uh, like a brightening or a contrast sometimes you'll pick up a color cast um, and it may maybe the image will go a little bit more saturated in that area and a simple way around that and let me just take the uh, wave layer as an example um, let me just put this back to normal so normally you would be in a, like a normal blend mode and uh, if you find you are picking up a bit of a, a color boost or a, some or discoloration always um, have a look at luminosity luminosity will allow the adjustment to come through the tonal adjustment the brightening but it will do it without picking up that extra color saturation if you, uh, if you find you are picking up some So here's my finished adjustments. Here's before, and here is after. Quite subtle, uh, but significant. Um, not only have we gone in and brightened certain parts of the image, but we've also added emphasis on the the area of the boatman, which is the important part of the image. Um, and we've done that uh, by basically brightening that, that area. Um, remember, people's eyes are drawn to areas of high contrast, uh, certain colours, and obviously certain brightnesses and sharpness, etc. So by brightening these areas, we've helped uh, we've helped direct our viewer's eye to the uh, important part of the picture. Um, so this is the real the fun bit of Photoshop for me. I hope you picked up a few uh, tricks and tips there, and I hope to catch you on the next video. Cheers for watching.